Welcome back. In this video, we're going to walk through setting up Stable Diffusion on Ubuntu 23.10 for those of us with an Intel Arc card, or if you want to use Stable Diffusion through OpenVINO. Before we start, I want to make some recommendations. Given the ongoing development and potential discontinuation risks associated with Intel Arc and OpenVINO, I advise setting up a dedicated Ubuntu instance on a separate drive or partition for this project. And yes, I know drives aren't as affordable <gasps> as they were this time last year. But this approach protects your primary environment from the uncertainties of experimental software and packages from a repo that may be abandoned in the event Intel decides to tighten its belt further and potentially cancel either Arc or OpenVINO or both. Finally, be aware of the risks. Back up your data, especially if you're using your primary system while following this tutorial. This is crucial whether you're well seasoned with adding a new partition or installing Grub because you're adding a second drive or partition. Data safety is paramount. With that said, let's get started. To start off, navigate to your home directory using cd tilde. The tilde is the much appreciated, by me at least, shorthand for the system's home directory. Now that you've got Python installed, you do have the right version of Python installed, right? It's time to install the Intel packages that allows art cards to diffuse, among other compute abilities. So this page on the Intel site is sort of the portal for all you need to get required Ubuntu drivers needed for compute and media tasks on Arc. However, there's a catch with these packages. They're part of an Intel managed repository designed to integrate out of tree kernel drivers that enhance the kernel's compatibility with Intel Arc and XE core functionalities. While these drivers facilitate advanced features and performance, they introduce a layer of dependency on Intel's repository, which could be a concern if it becomes unsupported in the future. This potential for change underscores the importance of setting up a separate Ubuntu instance for this project, safeguarding your primary setup from any instability. But back to the install. First, I'm going to add the Intel repo with wget. In this instance, wget is retrieving a key to confirm that the repository it's downloading from is the actual Intel graphics repository hosted by Intel, as opposed to some sham malicious repo. I'll keep this graphic up with the wget command as I run the command here. Now, to install the actual compute, media, and display packages. That command and all the packages to be installed are included in 2.1.3 of this DGPU docs page. If you need support for i386 programs using your system's graphics, you can add the packages in the section below this one. But if you want to use Steam on this instance, maybe just install the Flatpak version. We aren't going to be doing any development or GPU debugging, so I won't be adding those packages. Now, we transition to setting up the automatic 1111 stable diffusion combo as provided by the OpenVINO toolkit repo on GitHub. This involves navigating to the GitHub repository for the OpenVINO adaption of the automatic 1111 stable diffusion web UI. There's a link to the instructions that are tailored for Intel Silicon. I'll click on that. Following the Linux installation guide, we're reminded to use Python 3.10 or newer. My choice of Python 3.10.6 aligns with these recommendations and is consistent with the guidance provided for Windows users. Initiating the setup, we create a Python virtual environment named SD underscore ENV. Python virtual environments isolates a given project's dependencies to a simulated space, ensuring a clean and controlled execution environment. In this case, the project is Stable Diffusion. Now, to initialize that virtual environment with source sd underscore env Oops. slash bin slash activate within the home directory. Activating sd underscore env confirms our virtual environment is ready, signified by its name appearing in parentheses in our terminal. 
This setup ensures that Python execution or package installation is confined to SDENV, avoiding conflicts with the system-wide Python or any other Python installation. Now, staying in the home directory, I'm going to clone the OpenVINO implementation of Stable Diffusion from the OpenVINO Toolkit repo. Alright, let me make sure I have the directory right. I'll cd into the directory of the cloned GitHub subrepo. Now, I'll export the two lines as instructed in the GitHub wiki. You should really also install a couple of packages. You'll see why later. Now, the big moment. To run webui.sh. And now to wait for all of the downloads. This is going to take a while unless you have gigabit internet or something. Okay, now that everything has downloaded and the browser interface is up, I recommend creating a text document to consolidate all necessary commands for future reference. This document streamlines the startup process, eliminating the need to navigate through GitHub or bookmarked pages for instructions. I think it's just better to make a local document with all of the stuff in it. So with that done, let's go run our first prompt. I'll change the checkpoint dropdown to v1-5-prune. That's the only one there at the moment. This next one, I normally forget when I start up this whole thing. Go down to the script dropdown at the bottom of the page and select accelerate with OpenVINO. After that, a number of dropdowns will appear under the script dropdown you just changed. The only one you have to dabble with right now is the select a device dropdown. You want to change that from CPU to GPU assuming you have a discrete Intel Arc card. So I'll run a simple prompt. I'm going to simply enter messy room, a prompt I saw in that Tom's Hardware article from last August about the A770 performance increase in stable diffusion. All right, so the first run always takes a bit of extra time. Uh... There seems to be a problem. Good thing I've seen it before. And I know where the solution is. Okay, so I'm on the GitHub issues page for the OpenVINO implementation of the automatic 1111 web UI. There's a post titled, Bug, Instructions for Linux Install are Incorrect. It seems to be issue number 81. How did I find the solution to this issue previously? I entered the few lines at the end of the readout on the terminal before the you can suppress this exception and fall back to eager by setting boilerplate. So the title of the issue sums this up correctly. It seems the developers working on adapting automatic 1111 to work with the OpenVINO toolkit added some updates in about late November of last year. GitHub user HashFactory, thank you HashFactory, provides the solution. I, and you, the viewer using this video as a guide, needs to run another export statement. Export, all caps, use underscore openvino dash one, and install two Python packages using pip. Really, I think these are updates. So, pip install torch equal equal 2.1.0 and torch vision equal equal 0 0.16.0. These seem to be specific packages of torch and torch vision, packages I would imagine we already have but have older versions of. I could imagine that you could run these commands when you're first getting things set up and entering in the first two export statements before running webui.sh for the first time. All right, this should work. Okay, the web interface is back up. I'm going to try messy room again. Oh, almost hit generate before adding the accelerate with OpenVINO script and changing the device from CPU to GPU. Let's see how this works. Well, 
The first prompt is always the longest. Let's cut to when it started. It took very little time to actually render this image. Let's try another prompt of something more appealing. How about a BMW 525 driving down a city street at night? Alright, that only took a few seconds. This image uses a lot of orange. Let's see if we can get a cooler vibe with a synthwave color theme. Wow. Well, that wraps things up for this video. I'm diving into the world of open source AI tools that regular people can use on Linux. I'll be focusing on Arc for now, but NVIDIA cards and CUDA are also on my radar. Hopefully you find that compelling. Don't forget to subscribe if you're keen on exploring this stuff with me, and drop a comment below if there's a particular tool you're curious about or have experiences to share. Until next time, take care.